Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer back with part three of this SIBO series. In the first video, we talked about a common reason or an explanation as to why you might be experiencing the bloating, the cramping, the spasming after a meal. In video number two, we went into detail explaining the symptoms of SIBO and, and the most common mistake that I see people make when it comes to having a relapse of this bacterial overgrowth. So in today's video, we want to explain really the testing that's needed to identify this SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now I'll tell you, after my last video, we received so many different emails inquiring as to if we work with patients outside the United States, if we work with patients outside of Illinois, and to answer that question real quickly is we do, okay? So if you're interested in our program, um, and you just reach out to us, that's, that's the best way to do it, okay? We do offer free 15-minute phone consults before we determine if you're a good candidate for our, for our program. So again, just reach out to us, okay? But the point of this video um, is if that you've missed the last two videos, you're gonna wanna go back and watch those, okay? But really quickly, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And what happens here is that there are many different kinds of bacteria that we, that we normally find in the large intestines, okay? It's populating and, and, and what can happen is, is it can begin to overgrow in the small intestines where they don't belong. So when it comes to testing for SIBO, okay, the small intestines realize it's obviously a hard place to get to, right? Um, you know, here's the thing, if you wanna see it, Sampling the small intestines, you could have an upper GI scope or what's called an endoscope. But the problem and the limitation here is it only reaches the very, very top portion of the small intestines. If you want to see the large intestines, you could get a colonoscopy. But again, here, the limitation is that it only reaches the very end portion of the large intestines. And you also can't get a good view of the right side. Now, the middle part of the intestines is about 17 feet long. And so, again, here, it's not the most accessible area. Stool testing. We use a lot of stool testing in our office, but I will tell you that it predominantly reflects the habitat uh, of the large intestines. So again, as you can see here, options for understanding the environment of the, of the small intestines has very much been limited up to this point in time. However, there is a non-invasive test. We talked about this in, in the past video. We talked a little bit about it, but there's a non-invasive test which is commonly used in SIBO research. It's actually called the hydrogen breath test. This is a fantastic test. Many practitioners that, that I consult with, um, you know, and that I, that I teach about through functional medicine are finding out about and learning about and implementing this test with their patients. And they're having great success because of it. Now, the best part about this test is that you can do it from your own home, okay? Now, here's what happens. During a breath test, the patient is going to orally ingest a carbohydrate called lactulose, okay? Then what's gonna happen at 20, 40, and 60 minutes post the ingestion of that lactulose, they're gonna collect their breath by blowing into a specialized bag, okay? So here, here's how this works. Um, once you blow into the bag, the bacteria in the intestines are designed to break down or ferment these sugars, right? So the bacteria that are, are populating the, the large intestines and the small intestines, they actually will, are, are designed to some extent to break down sugars, okay? So when we eat these sugars, it's gonna get broken down into methane and hydrogen. Now these gases are then absorbed into the bloodstream and then get, they get transported to the lungs where we can now actually measure the amount of hydrogen and the amount of methane. Now any reading above 20 parts per million within a 60 minute period of time, that is diagnostic for SIBO, okay? You know, we often see some of those, those readings, 30, 40, 50, 60 parts per million, um, you know, which is clinically, you know, very, very uh, a severe case of SIBO. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you suffer with bloating, you suffer with cramping, especially after eating, part of your problem could be SIBO. And if that's the case, I encourage you to go back to my website, watch that video that I put together that just explains more about the 10, step, 10 steps to our IBS recovery program. Again, this program has an over 90% success rate. And again, I want you to watch this because it, it may literally just put an end to the years uh, of suffering that you, you've been going through. And I, I'll tell you, every day I hear patients that, that just you know break down on the phone and they've gone from doctor to doctor to doctor and they're not getting any answers. They've tried everything on the, on the, uh, you know, over the counter. They've taken so many different antibiotics, which has only disrupted you know, their, their intestinal problem even worse. And I don't want to see that happen to you, okay? So go back, watch that video, stay with us throughout this series because I promise you, there's just be so much great information that you'll take away from this, okay? Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care.